Ronald Ernest Paul born August 20, 1935, is an American author, physician, and retired politician who served as the U.S. Representative for Texas's 22nd Congressional District from 1976 to 1977 and again from 1979 to 1985, and for Texas's 14th Congressional District from 1997 to 2013. On three occasions, he sought the presidency of the United States, as the Libertarian Party nominee in 1988 and as a candidate in the Republican primaries of 2008 and 2012. Paul is a critic of the federal government's fiscal policies, especially the existence of the Federal Reserve and the tax policy, as well as the military-industrial complex, and the war on drugs. He has also been a vocal critic of mass surveillance policies such as the USA Patriot Act and the NSA surveillance programs. He was the first chairman of the conservative PAC Citizens for a Sound Economy and has been characterized as the intellectual godfather of the Tea Party movement. Paul served as a flight surgeon in the U.S. Air Force from 1963 to 1968, and worked as an obstetrician gynecologist from the 1960s to the 1980s. He became the first representative in history to serve concurrently with their child in the Senate when his son, Rand Paul, was elected to the U.S. Senate from Kentucky in 2010. Paul is a senior fellow of the Mises Institute, and has published a number of books and promoted the ideas of economists of the Austrian school such as Murray Rothbard and Ludwig von Mises during his political campaigns. On July 12, 2011, Paul announced that he would forego seeking another term in Congress in order to focus on his presidential bid. On May 14, 2012, Paul announced that he would not be competing in any other presidential primaries but that he would still compete for delegates in states where the primary elections have already been held. At the 2012 Republican National Convention, Paul received 190 delegate votes. In January 2013, Paul retired from Congress but still remains active on college campuses, giving speeches promoting his libertarian vision. Paul received one electoral vote from a Texas faithless elector in the 2016 presidential election, making him the oldest person to receive an electoral vote, as well as the second registered libertarian presidential candidate in history to receive an electoral college vote after John Hospers. Early life, education, and medical career Ronald Ernest Paul was born on August 20, 1935, in Pittsburgh, the son of Howard Casper Paul 1904 who ran a small dairy company, and Margaret Paul née Dumont, 1908 his paternal grandfather emigrated from Germany, and his paternal grandmother, a devout Christian, was a first-generation German-American. As a junior at Suburban Dormont High School, he was the 200-meter dash state champion. Paul went to Gettysburg College, where he was a member of the Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. He graduated with a B.S. degree in biology in 1957. Paul earned a Doctor of Medicine degree from Duke University's School of Medicine in 1961, and completed his medical internship at the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit and his residency in obstetrics and gynecology at McGee Women's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Paul served as a flight surgeon in the United States Air Force from 1963 to 1965 and then in the United States Air National Guard from 1965 to 1968. Paul and his wife then relocated to Texas, where he began a private practice in obstetrics and gynecology. Early congressional career 1976 to 1985. While a medical resident in the 1960s, Paul was influenced by Friedrich Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, which caused him to read other publications by Ludwig von Mises and Ayn Rand. He came to know economists Hans Senholz and Murray Rothbard well, and credits his interest in the study of economics to them. When President Richard Nixon closed the gold window by ending American participation in the Bretton Woods system, thus ending the U.S. dollar's loose association with gold on August 15, 1971, Paul decided to enter politics and became a Republican candidate for the United States Congress. Post-1976 
Topic: <laughs> Elections. In 1974, incumbent Robert R. Casey defeated him for the 22nd District. President Gerald Ford later appointed Casey to direct the Federal Maritime Commission, and Paul won an April 1976 special election to the vacant office after a runoff. Paul lost the next regular election to Democrat Robert Gamage by fewer than 300 votes .2%, but defeated Gamage in a 1978 rematch, and was re-elected in 1980 and 1982. Gamage underestimated Paul's popularity among local mothers. I had real difficulty down in Brazoria County, where he practiced, because he'd delivered half the babies in the county. There were only two obstetricians in the county, and the other one was his partner. Topic. Tenure Paul served in Congress three different periods, first from 1976 to 1977, after he won a special election, then from 1979 to 1985, and finally from 1997 to 2013. In his early years, Paul served on the House Banking Committee, where he blamed the Federal Reserve for inflation and spoke against the banking mismanagement that resulted in the savings and loan crisis. Paul argued for a return to the gold standard maintained by the U.S. from 1873 to 1933, and with Senator Jesse Helms convinced the Congress to study the issue. He spoke against the reinstatement of registration for the military draft in 1980, in opposition to President Jimmy Carter and the majority of his fellow Republican members of Congress. During his first term, Paul founded the Foundation for Rational Economics and Education, free, a nonprofit think tank dedicated to promoting principles of limited government and free market economics. In 1984, Paul became the first chairman of the Citizens for a Sound Economy CSE, a conservative political group founded by Charles and David Koch, "...to fight for less government, lower taxes, and less regulation." CSE started a Tea Party protest against high taxes in 2002. In 2004, Citizens for a Sound Economy split into two new organizations, with Citizens for a Sound Economy being renamed as FreedomWorks, and Citizens for a Sound Economy Foundation becoming Americans for Prosperity. The two organizations would become key players in the Tea Party movement from 2009 onward. Paul proposed term limit legislation multiple times, while himself serving four terms in the House of Representatives. In 1984, he decided to retire from the House in order to run for the U.S. Senate, complaining in his House farewell address that, "...special interests have replaced the concern that the Founders had for general welfare It's difficult for one who loves true liberty and utterly detests the power of the state to come to Washington for a period of time and not leave a true cynic." Paul lost the Republican primary to Phil Graham, who had switched parties the previous year from Democrat to Republican. Another candidate of the senatorial primary was Henry Grover, a conservative former state legislator who had lost the 1972 gubernatorial general election to the Democrat Dolph Briscoe Jr. On Paul's departure from the House, his seat was assumed by former state representative Tom DeLay, who would later become House Majority Leader. Topic. Libertarian Party and Ventures 1985–1997 Following the loss of the 1984 Senate race, Paul returned to his obstetrics practice and took part in a number of other business ventures. Along with his former Congressional Chief of Staff, Lou Rockwell, Paul founded a for-profit enterprise, Ron Paul & Associates, Inc. in 1984, with Paul serving as President, Rockwell as Vice President, Paul's wife Carol as Secretary, and daughter Lori Pyatt as Treasurer. The company published a variety of political and investment-oriented newsletters, including Ron Paul Freedom Report and Ron Paul Survival Report, and by 1993 was generating revenues in excess of $900,000. Paul also co-owned a mail-order coin dealership, Ron Paul Coins, for 12 years with Bert Blumert, who continued to operate the dealership after Paul resumed office in 1996. Paul spoke multiple times at the American Numismatic Association's 1988 convention. 
He worked with his Foundation for Rational Economics and Education on such projects as establishing the National Endowment for Liberty, producing the at-issue public policy series that was broadcast on the Discovery Channel and CNBC, and continuing publication of newsletters. Topic: 1988 Presidential Campaign. Paul left the Republican Party in 1987 and launched a bid for the presidency running on the Libertarian Party ticket. His candidacy was seen as problematic because of the party's long support for freedom of choice on abortions. Native American activist Russell Means, Paul's rival for the nomination, emphasized that he was pro-choice on the abortion issue. In a forum held prior to the nomination, Means dismissed the greater funds raised by Paul's campaign, commenting that Means was receiving ten times more press than the former congressman and was therefore one hundred times more effective. In the 1988 presidential election, Paul was on the ballot in 46 states, scoring third in the popular vote with 432,179 votes 0.5%. Paul was kept off the ballot in Missouri, due to what the St. Louis Post-Dispatch termed a «technicality» and received votes there only when written in, just as he did in North Carolina. According to Paul, his presidential campaign was about more than obtaining office, he sought to promote his libertarian ideas, often to school and university groups regardless of vote eligibility. He said, We're just as interested in the future generation as this election. These kids will vote eventually, and maybe, just maybe, they'll go home and talk to their parents. Paul considered campaigning for president in 1992, but instead chose to endorse Pat Buchanan that year, and served as an advisor to Buchanan's Republican presidential primary campaign against incumbent President George H. W. Bush. 1997 to 2013. Later congressional career Topic: Elections. 1996 campaign during 1996, Paul was re-elected to Congress after a difficult campaign. The Republican National Committee endorsed incumbent Greg Laughlin in the primary. Paul won with assistance from baseball pitcher, constituent, and friend Nolan Ryan, tax activist and publisher Steve Forbes, and conservative commentator Pat Buchanan, the latter two of whom had had presidential campaigns that year. Paul narrowly defeated Democratic attorney Charles Lefty. Morris in the fall election, despite Morris's criticism over controversial statements in several newsletters that Paul published. 1998–2013In 1998 and 2000, Paul defeated Loy Snary, a Democratic Bay City, Texas, rice farmer and former Matagorda County judge. In the 2008 Republican primary, he defeated Friendswood City Councilman Chris Peden, with over 70% of the vote and ran unopposed in the general election. In the 2010 Republican primary, Paul defeated three opponents with 80% of the vote. On July 12, 2011, Paul announced that he would not seek re election to the House in order to pursue the 2012 presidential election. Tenure Legislation of the 620 bills that Paul had sponsored through December 2011, over a period of more than 22 years in Congress, only one had been signed into law, a lifetime success rate of less than 0.3%. The sole measure authored by Paul that was ultimately enacted allowed for a federal custom house to be sold to a local historic preservation society HR 2121 in 2009 by amending other legislation he has helped prohibit funding for national identification numbers funding for federal teacher certification international criminal court jurisdiction over the US military American participation with any UN global tax and surveillance of peaceful first amendment activities by citizens. Affiliations Paul was honorary chairman of, and is a member of the Republican Liberty Caucus, a political action committee that describes its goal as electing, "...liberty-minded, limited government individuals." 
He is an initiating member of the Congressional Rural Caucus, which deals with agricultural and rural issues, and the 140-member Congressional Wildlife Refuge Caucus. Topic: Committee assignments. Paul served on the following committees and subcommittees: Committee on Financial Services, Subcommittee on Domestic Monetary Policy and Technology, Chairman, Subcommittee on International Monetary Policy and Trade, Committee on Foreign Affairs, Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations, with the election of the 112th Congress and a resulting GOP majority in the House, Paul became the chairman of the Subcommittee on Domestic Monetary Policy and Technology starting in January 2011. Paul's congressional career ended on January 3, 2013, with the swearing in of the 113th Congress. Topic. 2008 presidential campaign Topic 2008 Republican primary campaign Paul formally declared his candidacy for the 2008 Republican nomination on March 12, 2007 on C-SPAN Few major politicians endorsed him, and his campaign was largely ignored by traditional media. However, he attracted an intensely loyal grassroots following, interacting through Internet social media. In May 2007, shortly after the first televised primary debates, the blog's search engine site, Technorati.com listed Paul's name as the term most frequently searched for, and Paul's campaign claimed that Paul had more YouTube channel subscribers than Barack Obama or any other candidate for president. For a candidate who had had relatively low national name recognition prior to entering the race, Paul did surprisingly well in fundraising, taking in more money than any other Republican candidate in the fourth quarter of 2007. As the primary season headed into the Iowa caucuses, despite benefiting from large numbers of campaign contributions from individual donors, and the efforts of tech savvy supporters determined to keep his name a frequent topic of discussion on the Internet, over the course of the campaign Paul was unable to translate the enthusiasm of his core supporters into large enough numbers of actual primary votes to unseat his rivals. Paul came in fifth place in both the January 4 Iowa caucuses 10% of votes cast and the January 8 New Hampshire primary 8%. With the exception of the Nevada caucuses January 19, where he came in second 14% behind Romney 51%, he did little better through the rest of January, Michigan 4th 6%, South Carolina 5th 4%, Florida 5th 3%. On SuperTuesday, February 5, he placed 4th in almost every state, generally taking in a mere 3–6% of the votes although he did better in the northern states of North Dakota 21%, third place and Montana 25%, second place. By March, front-runner John McCain had secured enough pledged delegates to guarantee that he would win the nomination, and Romney and Huckabee had both formally withdrawn from the race. Paul, who had won no state primaries, knew that it was now mathematically impossible for him to win the nomination, as he had captured only 20 to 40 pledged delegates compared to more than 1,191 for McCain, yet he refused to concede the race and said that it was unlikely that he would ultimately endorse McCain. Over the next few weeks, Paul's supporters clashed with establishment Republicans at several county and state party conventions over state party rules, the party platforms, and selection of delegates for the national convention. In one of the more dramatic moments, Nevada's state party leaders, outmaneuvered by Paul supporters at the state nominating convention, resorted to the highly unusual measure of prematurely and abruptly shutting down the convention before selecting national delegates, with a plan to reconvene at a later date. On June 12, 2008, Paul finally withdrew his bid for the Republican nomination. He later said that one of the reasons he did not run in the general election as a third-party candidate, after losing the primaries, was that, as a concession to gain ballot access in certain states, he had signed legally binding agreements to not run a third-party campaign if he lost the primary. Some of the $4 million remaining campaign contributions was invested into the new political action and advocacy group called Ron Paul's Campaign for Liberty.
Topic: <laughs> Refusal to endorse the Republican nominee. At a September 10, 2008, press conference, Paul announced his general support of four third-party candidates, Cynthia McKinney Green Party, Bob Barr Libertarian Party, Chuck Baldwin Constitution Party, and Ralph Nader Independent. He said that each of them had pledged to adhere to a policy of balancing budgets, bringing the troops home, defending privacy and personal liberties, and investigating the Federal Reserve. Paul also said that under no circumstances would he be endorsing either of the two main parties' candidates McCain, Republican Party, or Obama, Democratic Party because there were no real differences between them, and because neither of them, if elected, would seek to make the fundamental changes in governance that were necessary. He urged instead that, rather than contribute to the charade, that the two-party election system had become, the voters support the third-party candidates as a protest vote, to force change in the election process. Later that same day, Paul gave a televised interview with Nader saying much the same again, two weeks later, "...shocked and disappointed." That Bob Barr, the Libertarian nominee, had pulled out of attending the press conference at the last minute and had admonished Paul for remaining neutral and failing to say which specific candidate Paul would vote for in the general election. Paul released a statement saying that he had decided to endorse Chuck Baldwin, the Constitution Party candidate, for president. Paul withdrew from active campaigning in the last weeks of the primary election period. He received 42,426 votes, or 0.03% of the total cast, in the general election. Topic: 2012 presidential campaign. Topic: 2012 Republican primary campaign. Paul won several early straw polls for the 2012 Republican presidential nomination and formed an official exploratory committee in late April 2011. He participated in the first Republican presidential debate on May 5, 2011 and on May 13, 2011 formally announced his candidacy in an interview on ABC's Good Morning America. He placed second in the 2011 Ames Straw Poll, missing first by 0.9%. In December 2011, with Paul's increased support, the controversy over racist and homophobic statements in several Ron Paul newsletters in the 1980s and early 1990s once again gained media attention. During this time Paul supporters asserted that he was continually ignored by the media despite his significant support, citing examples of where television news shows would fail to mention Paul in discussions of the Republican presidential hopefuls even when he was polling second. <inaudible> <inaudible> Iowa campaign Ron Paul's presidential campaign managers Jesse Benton, John Tate and Dimitri Kesari were all found guilty of paying former Iowa State Senator Kent Sorensen $73,000 to switch his support from Representative Michelle Bachman to Paul. In court papers filed in August 2014, Sorensen said that he had been paid by both presidential campaigns for his endorsement and plead guilty to criminal charges stemming from the incident. Paul came in third in the Iowa Republican caucus held on January 3, 2012. Out of a turnout of 121,503 votes, Paul took 26,036 of the certified votes. Rick Santorum and Mitt Romney finished in a virtual tie for first place with 25% each, although Ron Paul had ultimately won Iowa at the Republican National Convention gathering 22 delegates to Mitt Romney's five. In the New Hampshire primary held on January 10, 2012, Paul received 23% of the votes and came in second after Romney's 39%. South Carolina, Florida, Nevada Paul's results then declined, despite the withdrawal of candidates Michelle Bachman, John Huntsman, and Rick Perry. He had fourth place finishes in the next two primaries, on January 21 in South Carolina with 13% of the vote and on January 31 in Florida where he received 7% of the vote. 
On February 4, Paul finished third in Nevada with 18.8% .8 of the vote. Three non-binding primaries were held on February 7. Paul took third place in Colorado and Missouri with 13% and 12% of the vote respectively. He fared better in Minnesota with 27%, finishing second to Rick Santorum. On May 14, Paul's campaign announced that due to lack of funds though despite financial backing from financiers Peter Thiel and Mark Spitznagel he would no longer actively campaign for votes in the 11 remaining primary states, including Texas and California, that had not yet voted. He would, however, continue to seek to win delegates for the National Party Convention in the states that had already voted. Topic. Irregularities In June, a group of 132 supporters of Paul, demanding the freedom as delegates to the upcoming Republican Party National Convention to cast votes for Paul, filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court against the Republican National Committee and 55 state and territorial Republican Party organizations for allegedly coercing delegates to choose Mitt Romney as the party's presidential nominee. The suit alleged that there had been a systematic campaign of election fraud at state conventions, employing rigging of voting machines, ballot stuffing, and falsification of ballot totals. The suit further pointed to incidents at state conventions, including acts of violence and changes in procedural rules, allegedly intended to deny participation of Paul supporters in the party decision making and to prevent votes from being cast for Paul. An attorney representing the complainants said that Paul campaign adviser Doug Weed had voiced support for the legal action. Paul himself told CNN that although the lawsuit was not a part of his campaign's strategy and that he had not been advising his supporters to sue, he was not going to tell his supporters not to sue, if they had a legitimate argument. If they're not following the rules, you have a right to stand up for the rules. I think for the most part these winning caucuses that we've been involved in we have followed the rules. And the other side has at times not followed the rules. <laughs> Republican National Convention Paul declined to speak at the Republican National Convention as a matter of principle, saying that the convention planners had demanded that his remarks be vetted by the Romney campaign and that he make an unqualified endorsement of Romney. Paul had felt that, "...it wouldn't be my speech that would undo everything I've done in the last 30 years. I don't fully endorse him for president." Many of Paul's supporters and delegates walked out of the convention in protest over rules adopted by the convention that reduced their delegate count and that would make it harder for non-establishment candidates to win the party's nomination in future elections. Supporters and media commentators had noted that the delegations from states where Paul had had the most support were given the worst seats in the convention hall, while delegations from regions with no electoral votes, such as the Northern Mariana Islands, American Samoa, and Puerto Rico, were given prime seats at the front. Topic: <laughs> Refusal to endorse the Republican nominee. As in 2008, in 2012 Paul ultimately refused to endorse the ticket selected by the Republican Party. He said that there was no essential difference between Romney and his Democratic opponent, President Obama, on the most critical policies. I've been in this business a long time and believe me there is essentially no difference from one administration to another no matter what the platforms. The foreign policy stays the same, the monetary policy stays the same, there's no proposal for any real cuts and both parties support it." Paul received 26,204 write-in votes, or 0.02% of the total cast in the election. <laughs> Political party identification Throughout his entire tenure in Congress, Paul has represented his district as a member of the Republican Party. However, he has frequently taken positions in direct opposition to the other members and the leadership of the party, and he has sometimes publicly questioned whether he really belonged in the party. 
Paul voted for Dwight D. Eisenhower for president in 1956 when he was 21 years old. He had been a lifelong supporter of the Republican Party by the time he entered politics in the mid-1970s. He was one of the first elected officials in the nation to support Ronald Reagan's presidential campaign, and he actively campaigned for Reagan in 1976 and 1980. After Reagan's election in 1980, Paul quickly became disillusioned with the Reagan administration's policies. He later recalled being the only Republican to vote against Reagan budget proposals in 1981, aghast that, "...in 1977, Jimmy Carter proposed a budget with a $38 billion deficit, and every Republican in the House voted against it." In 1981, Reagan proposed a budget with a $45 billion deficit, which turned out to be $113 billion, and Republicans were cheering his great victory. They were living in a storybook land. He expressed his disgust with the political culture of both major parties in a speech delivered in 1984 upon resigning from the House of Representatives to prepare for a failed run for the Senate, and he eventually apologized to his libertarian friends for having supported Reagan. By 1987, Paul was ready to sever all ties to the Republican Party, as he explained in a blistering resignation letter. Since 1981, Ronald Reagan and the Republican Party have given us skyrocketing deficits, and astoundingly a doubled national debt. How is it that the party of balanced budgets, with control of the White House and Senate, accumulated red ink greater than all previous administrations put together? There is no credibility left for the Republican Party as a force to reduce the size of government. That is the message of the Reagan years." A month later he announced he would seek the 1988 Libertarian Party nomination for president. During the 1988 campaign, Paul called Reagan, "...a dramatic failure," and complained that, "...Reagan's record is disgraceful. He starts wars, breaks the law, supplies terrorists with guns made at taxpayers' expense and lies about it to the American people." Paul predicted that, the Republicans are on their way out as a major party." And he said that, although registered as a Republican, he had always been a libertarian at heart. Paul returned to his private medical practice and managing several business ventures after losing the 1988 election, but by 1996, he was ready to return to politics, this time running on the Republican Party ticket again. He said that he had never read the entire Libertarian platform when he ran for president as a Libertarian in 1988, and that, "...I worked for the Libertarians on my terms, not theirs." He added that in terms of a political label he preferred to call himself, "...a constitutionalist. In Congress I took an oath to uphold the Constitution, not the Republican platform." When he lost the Republican Party presidential primary election in 2008, Paul criticized the two major political parties, saying that there was no real difference between the parties and that neither of them truly intended to challenge the status quo. He refused to endorse the Republican Party's nominee for president, John McCain, and lent his support to third-party candidates instead. In the 2012 presidential campaign, during which he acknowledged it was unlikely that he would win the Republican Party nomination, Paul again asserted that he was participating in the Republican Party on his own terms, trying to persuade the rest of the party to move toward his positions rather than joining in with theirs. He expressed doubt that he would support any of his rivals should they win the nomination, warning that if the policies of the Republican Party are the same as the Democrat Party and they don't want to change anything on foreign policy, they don't want to cut anything, they don't want to audit the Fed and find out about monetary policy, they don't want to have actual change in government, that is a problem for me." On that same theme he said in another interview, I would be reluctant to jump on board and tell all of the supporters that have given me trust and money that all of a sudden, I'd say, all, we've done is for naught. So, let's support anybody at all, even if they disagree with everything that we do. Topic. Political positions Paul has been described as conservative and libertarian. 
According to University of Georgia political scientist Keith Poole, Paul had the most conservative voting record of any member of Congress from 1937 to 2002, and is the most conservative of the candidates that had sought the 2012 Republican nomination for president. Other analyses have judged Paul much more moderate. The National Journal, for instance, rated Paul only the 145th most conservative member of the House of Representatives out of 435 based on votes cast in 2010. The National Journal's analysis gave Paul a 2011 composite ideological rating of 54% liberal and 46% conservative. The foundation of Paul's political philosophy is the conviction that the proper role for government in America is to provide national defense, a court system for civil disputes, a criminal justice system for acts of force and fraud, and little else." He has been nicknamed, "'Dr. No'," reflecting both his medical degree and his insistence that he will never vote for legislation unless the proposed measure is expressly authorized by the Constitution. Topic. Defense Paul has advocated for a non-interventionist foreign policy. He advocates withdrawal from the United Nations, and from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, for reasons of maintaining strong national sovereignty. He voted for the authorization for use of military force against terrorists in response to the September 11 attacks, but suggested war alternatives such as authorizing the president to grant letters of mark and reprisal targeting specific terrorists. An opponent of the Iraq War and potential war with Iran, he has also criticized neoconservatism and U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East, arguing that both inadvertently caused terrorist reprisals against Americans, such as the 9-11 attacks. Paul has stated that, "...Israel is our close friend," and that it is not the place of the United States to "...dictate how Israel runs her affairs." Domestic Paul endorses constitutional rights, such as the right to keep and bear arms, and habeas corpus for political detainees. He opposes the Patriot Act, federal use of torture, presidential autonomy, a national identification card, warrantless domestic surveillance, and the draft. Paul also believes that the notion of the separation of church and state is currently misused by the court system. In case after case, the Supreme Court has used the infamous separation of church and state metaphor to uphold court decisions that allow the federal government to intrude upon and deprive citizens of their religious liberty. Sometime within the same month, but much after the event of authorities executing a lockdown in sequence to the April 2013 Boston Marathon bombing, Paul commented on the tactics used by governing forces into a harsh criticism that he has written as a military-style occupation of an American city. Economic Paul is a proponent of Austrian school economics, he has authored six books on the subject, and displays pictures of Austrian school economists Friedrich Hayek, Murray Rothbard, and Ludwig von Mises as well as of President Grover Cleveland and Chicago school economist Milton Friedman on his office wall. He regularly votes against almost all proposals for new government spending, initiatives, or taxes. He cast two thirds of all the lone negative votes in the House during a 1995 1997 period. He has pledged never to raise taxes and states he has never voted to approve a budget deficit. Paul believes that the country could abolish the individual income tax by scaling back federal spending to its fiscal year 2000 levels. Financing government operations would be primarily by excise taxes and non protectionist tariffs. He endorses eliminating most federal government agencies, terming them unnecessary bureaucracies. On April 15, 2011, Paul was one of four Republican members of Congress to vote against Representative Paul Ryan's budget proposal, known as the Path to Prosperity. Paul has consistently warned of hyperinflation and called for the gold standard as far back as 1981. 
Since 1999, he has introduced bills into each Congress seeking to eliminate the Federal Reserve System in a single year. He endorses free trade, rejecting membership in the North American Free Trade Agreement (NAFTA) and the World Trade Organization as managed trade. Topic: <inaudible> Environmental <inaudible> 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 As a free market environmentalist, he asserts private property rights in relation to environmental protection and pollution prevention. He called global warming a hoax in a 2009 Fox Business interview, saying, "...you know, the greatest hoax I think that has been around in many, many years if not hundreds of years has been this hoax on the environment and global warming." He acknowledges there is clear evidence of rising temperatures in some parts of the globe, but says that temperatures are cooling in other parts. <laughs> <laughs> Health care Paul has stated that, "...the government shouldn't be in the medical business." He pushes to eliminate federal involvement with and management of health care, which he argues would allow prices to decrease due to the fundamental dynamics of a free market. He also opposes federal government influenza inoculation programs. <laughs> <laughs> Immigration Paul endorses increased border security and opposes welfare for illegal immigrants, birthright citizenship and amnesty. He voted for the Secure Fence Act of 2006. Topic: <laughs> Ballots and voting. He is an outspoken proponent of increased ballot access for third-party candidates. He has sought to repeal the National Voter Registration Act of 1993, also known as the Motor Voter Law. Secession Paul has stated that secession from the United States is a deeply American principle, and that if the possibility of secession is completely off the table there is nothing to stop the federal government from continuing to encroach on our liberties and no recourse for those who are sick and tired of it." Paul wrote the remarks in a post on his congressional website in one of his final public statements as a member of Congress, noting that many petitions had been submitted to the White House calling for secession in the wake of the November 2012 election. Social issues He terms himself, "...strongly pro-life", an unshakable foe of abortion", and believes regulation or ban on medical decisions about maternal or fetal health is, "...best handled at the state level." His abortion-related legislation, such as the Sanctity of Life Act, is intended to negate Roe v. Wade and to get the federal government completely out of the business of regulating state matters." Paul says his years as an obstetrician led him to believe life begins at conception. Paul opposes the federal war on drugs, and believes the states should decide whether to regulate or deregulate drugs such as medical marijuana. Citing the Ninth and Tenth Amendments, Paul advocates states' rights to decide how to regulate social matters not cited directly by the Constitution. He opposes federal regulation of the death penalty although he opposes capital punishment, of education, and of marriage, and endorsed revising the military's don't ask, don't tell policy to concern mainly disruptive sexual behavior whether heterosexual or homosexual. Paul was critical of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, arguing that it sanctioned federal interference in the labor market and did not improve race relations. He once remarked, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 not only violated the Constitution and reduced individual liberty, it also failed to achieve its stated goals of promoting racial harmony and a color-blind society." Paul opposes affirmative action. Controversies <inaudible> 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 Topic. Newsletters controversy 
Beginning in 1978, for more than two decades Paul and his associates published a number of political and investment-oriented newsletters bearing his name, Dr. Ron Paul's Freedom Report, the Ron Paul Survival Report, the Ron Paul Investment Letter, and the Ron Paul Political Report. A number of the newsletters, particularly in the period between 1988 and 1994 when Paul was no longer in Congress, contained material that later proved controversial. Topics included conspiracy theories, anti-government militia movements, and race wars. During Paul's 1996 congressional election campaign, and his 2008 and 2012 presidential primary campaigns, critics charged that some of the passages reflected racist, anti-Semitic, and homophobic bigotry. In a 1996 interview, Paul did not deny writing the newsletters and defended some of their contents, but specified that he opposes racism. In March 2001, Paul said he did not write the commentaries, but stopped short of denying authorship in 1996 because his campaign advisors had thought it would be too confusing and that he had to live with the material published under his name. Half a dozen libertarian activists, including some still closely associated with Paul, pointed to Lou Rockwell as the primary ghostwriter of the newsletters. Rockwell denied responsibility for the content. In 2011, Paul's spokesperson Jesse Benton said Paul had taken moral responsibility because they appeared under his name and slipped through under his watch. Topic: <laughs> Post-congressional career. In April 2013, Paul founded the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity, a foreign policy think tank that seeks to promote his non-interventionist views. The institute is part of his larger foundation Foundation for Rational Economics and Education. In the same month, he began to offer the Ron Paul Curriculum, a homeschool online curriculum developed by Gary North and taught from a free market and Christian perspective, it is free from grades kindergarten 5 and available to paid members from 6 to 12. In June 2013, Paul criticized the NSA surveillance program and praised Edward Snowden for having performed a great service to the American people by exposing the truth about what our government is doing in secret. On March 28, 2017, Paul predicted the markets would lower during the year and said President Trump had taken a risk with crediting himself for the post election market surge, reasoning Washington was still predominantly unchanged. Paul has been a critic of Donald Trump's plans to increase the number of military personnel in Afghanistan. In August 2017, he said that Americans don't see Afghanistan as a threat to their personal security and being aggressive in foreign policy only loses Trump some of his support base. Paul has also called for Trump to bring American troops back from Syria in April 2018, on the grounds that the threat from ISIS has been eliminated. Ron Paul Channel. In 2013, Paul established the Ron Paul Channel, an internet broadcast. Its slogan is, Turn off your TV. Turn on the truth. Speaking about the channel, Paul said, I was at a debate one time a couple years ago, where I didn't think I got a fair shake. In a two hour debate, I had 89 seconds. I thought, maybe there's something wrong with the media. Maybe they're not covering us fairly. I'm just using it as a pun, but there's a bit of truth to this. We don't get a fair shake. The people who believe in liberty and limited government don't expect it from the ordinary media." Speaking about his youth appeal, he noted, "...they don't sit and watch TV and turn the programs on at 7 o'clock to watch us like that, so I thought the technology was there. The country is ripe for the continuation of this revolution." In May 2015, Ron Paul ended all relationships with the Voices of Liberty and the Ron Paul Channel to start a new internet broadcast called the Ron Paul Liberty Report. According to Paul himself, it will not cost a thing, unlike the previous Ron Paul Channel. In the announcement of the ended relationship, Paul said, But the message I have always tried to deliver over the years has always been the same, and that is spreading the message of liberty. Right now I am very much engaged in doing that through the Internet. But, I believe we can do better. 
Right now, the program has changed to the Ron Paul Liberty Report, and that is what we do – we report on liberty in context of what is going on in daily activity and what is going on in the news." Paul went on to say that it will be more locally controlled, unlike the previous Ron Paul channel. Paul continued to say it will be produced out of Texas, instead of California. As of April 2019, the Ron Paul Liberty Report channel has received more than 17 million views on YouTube. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Spokesman for Stansberry Research. In April 2015, Paul began appearing in infomercials warning about an upcoming financial meltdown as a result of the imminent crash of the world's currencies. He urges listeners to read America 2020, The Survival Blueprint, a book written by Porter Stansberry. Topic: 2016 presidential election. Paul endorsed his son, Senator Rand Paul, in the Republican primary and campaigned for him in Iowa. After his son dropped out, Paul had said that no Republican or Democratic candidate even came close to holding libertarian views. Paul was disappointed in the Libertarian Party for nominating Gary Johnson for President of the United States and told independent voters that Jill Stein was a better candidate for those who lean towards progressivism and liberalism. Paul received one electoral vote from a Texas faithless elector, South Texas College political science professor William Green, who had been pledged to Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election, making Paul the oldest person ever to receive an electoral vote. Topic: <laughs> Personal life. Paul has been married to Carol Carolyn Wells since 1957. They met in 1952 when Wells asked Paul to be her escort to her 16th birthday party. They have five children, who were baptized Episcopalian, Ronald, Lori, Randall, Robert, and Joy. Paul's son Randall is the junior United States Senator from the state of Kentucky. Raised a Lutheran, Paul later became a Baptist. Since 1995, Carol Paul has published the Ron Paul Family Cookbook, a collection of recipes she and her friends contributed, and which was sold in part to support Ron Paul's political campaigns. His life and career is the subject of the 2012 film Ron Paul Uprising. Paul and his wife currently reside in Lake Jackson, Texas. Topic. Publications relating to Ron Paul Books Ron Paul's Revolution, The Man and the Movement He Inspired, by Brian Doherty, 2012 Films IOUSA features Paul among the cast. Bruno, a 2009 film by Sasha Baron Cohen in which Paul has a cameo appearance. Ron Paul Uprising, a 2012 film by William Lewis. Atlas Shrugged Part 3, Who is John Galt, a 2014 adaptation of Atlas Shrugged in which Paul has a cameo appearance. Bibliography Topic Other contributions Belloc, Hilaire, Chesterton, Cecil 2007 1911. The Party System. Paul, Ron Forward. Norfolk, Virginia, IHS Press. ISBN 978-1-932528-11-4. OCLC 173299105. Fortman, Eric, Lavello, Randy 2004. Webs of Power. Paul, Ron Interview. Austin, Texas, Van Cleve Publishing. ISBN 0-9759670-0-2. OCLC 61026033. Haugen, David M., Musser, Susan, eds. 2007. 
Human Embryo Experimentation. Paul, Ron. Chapter 9. No form of stem cell research should be federally funded. Detroit, Michigan: Greenhaven Press. ISBN 9780737732436. OCLC 84152907. CS1 maint: Multiple names. Authors list. Link. CS1 maint: Extra text. Authors list. Link. Haugen, David M. Ed. 2007. National Security. Paul, Ron. Chapter 1 to 7. The federal debt is a threat to national security. Detroit, Michigan: Greenhaven Press. ISBN 9780737737615. OCLC 144227284. CS1 maint: Extra text. Authors list. Link. Jaeger, James. Beer. Theodore. Griffin. G. Edward. Paul. Ron. Vieira. Edwin. 2007. Fiat Empire: Why the Federal Reserve Violates the U.S. Constitution. DVD. Beverly Hills, California: Cornerstone Matrix Entertainment. OCLC 192,133,806. Mins, Michael Lewis, 2001. How to Survive the IRS. Paul, Ron. Forward. Fort Lee, N.J.: Barricade Books. ISBN 1-56980-170-3. OCLC 44860846. Paul, Ron, Hayashi, Terry, Pardo, Victoriano and Fisher, Edwin August 1, 1969. Evaluation of Renal Biopsy in Pregnancy Toxemia. Obstetrics and Gynecology. American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. 34 to 235-241. PMID 5798269. Paul, Ron 1999. Being Pro-Life is Necessary to Defend Liberty. International Journal of Sociology and Social Policy. MCB University Press, Ltd. 19 3-4, doi.10.1108.0144333939.1. ISSN 0144-333-X. OCLC 89482648. Paul, Ron, Bartlett, Roscoe et al. 2001. The United Nations and the New World Order videotape. Brunswick, O. American Portrait Films, Inc. ISBN 1-57341-132-9. OCLC 56793278. Pearl, Sandy, Butel, Bill, Allies, Bob, Weingold, Dave, Paul, Ron, Barch, ed. 1980, Born Again videotape. Athens, Georgia, University of Georgia Instructional Resources Center. OCLC 7407395. Skousen, Mark, Weber, Chris, Ketcher, Michael, eds. 1987. The Closing Door. Paul, Ron Introduction. Bethel, Connecticut, Institute for the Preservation of Wealth worldcat.org slash OCLC slash 35396237 2D ed. 1988. ISBN 0-938689-03-7. OCLC 17209571, CS1 maint, multiple names, authors list link, CS1 maint, extra text, authors list link, Vieira Jr., Edwin 1983. Pieces of 8. Paul, Ron Forward. Fort Lee, N.J., Sound Dollar Committee. ISBN 978-0-8159-6226-7. OCLC 9919612, Von Nothaus, Bernard, ed., September 1, 2003. The Liberty Dollar Solution to the Federal Reserve. Paul, Ron, Chapter 21, Abolish the Fed. Evansville, Indiana, American Financial Press. ISBN 0-9671025-2-9. CS1 maint, extra text, authors list link.
Topic See also Criticism of the Federal Reserve List of federal political scandals in the United States <laughs>